And we're live. Hey, everybody, welcome to QA, <laughs> Know Your Gear QA 138. I've had 138 times to get it right. Still not there yet. So I'm going to mute that. <laughs> it's all right. We'll get it on 139, I promise. Uh, hope everybody's having a great week. I have a lot of stuff to cover and a lot of questions to answer. First, I'd like to do a quick shout out uh, to uh, Brian Boda. He did a uh, he did a super chat for no reason, man, before the show even started. So I hope you uh, that was on purpose. Otherwise, I think you forgot to type your question. But either way, if you do a question, uh, I'll try and try and find it later on as we go. Because uh, sometimes it happens. I see when you guys do the super chats, you'll you launch it and the, the question wasn't there. So I don't want you guys to get uh, not get your question answered real quick. If you're new to the channel or the first time watching a live QA on this show, there's a couple things you need to know, whatever the title and thumbnail is, it's based on just one of the questions down below. Usually the moment we talk about the longest, there's a index down below. If you're watching the rebroadcast of this, that tells you exactly where all the timestamps are. You can go right to them. Also, if you want to listen to this as a podcast, you sure can. It's on iTunes and other platforms and it is consumed more there than it is as a live show. So some people like to listen to me in the car, which is why I don't make crashing sounds. So they freak out. And, uh, and, uh, a uh, couple things, a uh, couple things I'm going to start the show with a uh, couple quick announcements that are important. The first announcements for me, it's to let you guys know that there is in the link down below, there's a link to the merchandise, the shirts, the hats, the, what have you, as you guys see, I'm wearing a PRS hat and a fender shirt today because I have no idea why, um, but for the record, so because I know it's going to come up, I bought this hat and this shirt with my own money. I made mowing lawns, but more importantly, this is my second PRS hat I bought. I bought the first one at the PRS event, and my dog, uh, was when I got home, was a puppy. My wife got a puppy, and when I came back, he ate the hat, so I bought this one at Guitar Center. The uh, the But the shirts and the merch, 10% off discount for you guys. And if you notice the merch code, the discount code for 10% is called Last Chance. For those of you who are new to the channel, you don't know this, but every year I discontinue the logos from the previous year. We change them, alter them in subtle ways so that every year when I see you and you're wearing my shirt or any of my merch, I can detect quickly what year, how long you've been a viewer or a fan of the channel. Um, and that's how I can tell. So I can tell everybody by the logos, the fonts, whatever, whatever changes we made, it tells me. Uh, so we discontinue them. So they'll all be discontinued as of the end of this month. If you guys want to get one, there's a 10% off discount. That's what you can spend your money on. Here's where you cannot spend your money on. Uh, there's also a link down below the Tone King. That's right. We all know the Tone King. He has hit a hundred thousand subscribers. Um, it's a huge milestone for a channel. It's, as you guys know, some of you guys watching this are YouTubers yourself and you know, it's hard. Every subscription is, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a magically weird thing that you can't figure out. He hit 100 subs, but it doesn't matter. He's still giving away. They're giving away. ESP and him are giving away an ESP guitar and LTD. Very cool guitar. The reason I want to tell you about that is even though you can still subscribe, it doesn't matter. He's already hit the 100,000. So you want to just join the the, 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 the page, I would recommend doing that because I like his channel, but more importantly, you click the link. You can get entered to win this guitar free of charge. It's a free link down below. You can win an ESP. I figured nothing's better than having an opportunity to win a guitar right before the holidays. So there you go. And those are my announcements. Let's get into the meat of the questions. Um, oh, and uh, I have two questions. First, I have one that I, I penned before the show started, but I had one emailed me this week and it was something I wanted to talk about because it was a strange email. And the email was, Phil, is Costco now an authorized vendor dealer? Which is an odd email. It poked out of the other emails this week, um, which is, you know, what? So let me tell you what they were talking about. What they were talking about. Let me see if I can add this. There you go. They were at a they were at a Costco and they saw this Fender guitar pack, the FA-125 pack. What I love about it, I don't know if you can see my cursor when I'm... <laughs> over it. Uh, I don't think you can. I love how somebody looks like they just kicked the crap out of this box. And I mean, I love it. Like I don't appreciate love it. I just love the irony of a warehouse store carrying a guitar and punching the box <laughs> anyways. Um, so a lot of you are like, yeah, they, they carry this one skew. They carry the Fender FA 125 dreadnought. Um, and, uh, that is an interesting question. So the answer to your question, no, um, Costco is not an authorized Fender dealer, 
why some of you might find that question so interesting is because the person who asked it just didn't say that because they saw a fender there. They are in the in the industry and they they know enough to know that every store just can't carry Fender. You can't just call Fender and say, I have a store. I like some Fender guitars. You have to be approved to be a Fender dealer. And there's buy-ins and requirements. And one of the first things uh, that I'll explain to you about Fender is there's tiers. So first is to be a Fender accessory dealer. That means you can access to their shirts and hats and cables and picks and strings. And that's the only thing you can buy from Fender. And then you get to the next tier and there's next tier will be like Squire product. You can get Squire. Now you can mix and match these tiers, but I'm just explaining to you. And then the next tier will be like Fender Acoustics is its own category because it says Fender on the acoustics. And then the amplifiers is another category. The Made in Mexico import guitars by Fender are another category. The American Series guitars are another category. Custom Shops another category. And Fender Amplifiers, if I didn't say that already, is another category. Um, so they have what's called buy codes. These are all the categories you can to be a dealer. So you can't just selectively go, I'll just carry American Strats or I'll selectively carry these five guitars because they're the top seller. So obviously Costco is big enough store, big enough chain that they were able to get Fender to sell them these Fender FA-125 packs. Why I am uh, thought this was a funny story to tell. I don't know if we got to keep looking at that. Let me remove it. <laughs> uh, here's what I want to tell you. So I actually have an interesting story about this. And at least I hope it's interesting. When, when we became a Fender dealer, when I opened the store and I became a Fender dealer first, um, we didn't carry Squire. And then over time, you figured out maybe you should have that for the holidays. And on in 2000, I want to say seven, we would probably buy 50 Squire packs before the holidays, before Christmas. And before Christmas came, we'd probably have to buy another 50 Squire packs. You'd sell them for about $200. Your cost on them was about $130. Uh, so you make 70 bucks if you didn't discount them in your store or try to you know do anything. And people would expect for the $200 to get the Squire and the, the amplifier and all that stuff. And you'd have to make sure it plays right. So pull it out of the box. We would check it, make sure it didn't have issues. Uh, and we would do what's called a light setup. You know, you're not going to sit there and, and tweak on it for too long, but you're going to make sure the guitar is fine for the customer. At that time, Costco and stores like Costco could only get Starcaster. People would come in the store and they say, hey, I see you have these packs for 200 bucks, but at Costco, you can get one for 179 and it was Starcaster. And we would explain that Starcaster is another uh, affiliate brand of, of Fender. It's another brand like Squire. It's a brand that's associated with Fender, but it's not Fender and it's not Squire. So the resale on a Squire is better than a Starcaster brand. And But essentially, it's the same guitar. We didn't ever... never you know, never applied anything different. It's the same guitar, probably made in the same factory to the same degree. Um, well, over time, as the recession came and it got a little harder to sell in the market, all of a sudden we noticed Costco went from the Scar Starcaster series to the actual Squire packs that stores like us would carry and Guitar Center would carry. And they would make them cheaper. They'd make them 179. And then it gets it got tough because you had the same margins and then you had to cut the margins. So you here you are, a mom and pop store matching Costco, <laughs> right? So you have a store that's matching a billion dollar entity in price and trying to give the service of the customer. Now, I love Costco. So they have great uh, return service and all that stuff. There's a reason why I'm telling the story because there's funny stuff to have. I promise. Hold hold tight. Um, but, you know, you'd have to make sure the guitar still plays right and Costco didn't have to worry about that. That's added cost. Um, what we noticed about all these packs that, that Costco would sound was Costco was doing something weird. Like somebody would buy the pack and break a string and then return it to Costco and Costco would just replace it with another guitar. So that was, was weird to us, right? They didn't replace the string. So it would explain how little uh, informed Costco was as a, obviously as a retailer for guitars. But the reason why the story is important is uh, why I'm telling the story is because I, this is why I think they're carrying the Fender FA brand. Um, because what we noticed was we stopped carrying when, when Costco get in the market of selling the Squire packs, stores like mine stopped carrying the Squire packs. And this is a, this is again, just a, an interesting business an analytic to look at. Uh, the first Christmas was probably about 2012 In 2012, we didn't buy zero. We bought zero Squire packs. Even Fender was like, aren't you going to buy any Squire packs? And we're like, no, because what we did instead was we heavily advertised to everyone who bought a Squire pack at Costco, bring your guitar to us for a setup or intonation or our work and setups for us were $75. 
And this is what happens, true. We would, in January, do more setups on Squire packs than we sold normally in December, which means we netted a much, much bigger profit because we weren't discounting the Squires. Uh, I mean, we weren't discounting the setups like we were the Squires. And the setups were an opportunity to win the customer over. Um, a lot of times customers come in and go, well, the guitar was only 180 bucks. How can it be $75 to set it up? And we go, I don't know, that's just what we charge for a setup. And the reason I tell you that is because then they go, well, the teacher he's going to says he needs it. And, you know, and we would do the setup. So the the allocation of labor uh, was a much better deal. Very, very common in, in every industry. The bike industry is like this, the bicycle industry. Bike shops now charge for a lot of services they used to give away. So what's funny is this is what I think has happened next. I think Costco has Fender putting Fender in there. So that has bigger brand power. Uh, so to me, I'm telling you all that to tell you what I think this is, is not a good sign. The idea that the Fender FH125 is in there is although Costco is a great brand and I can see why you'd want to align yourself with a great store and a good brand a good reputation for having good employees, uh, good, good, good services. Um, as a guitar company, I don't know what the, the benefit would be other than you need them to buy. And I think at this point, Costco's like, if you want us to have guitars, they need to say Fender. So the answer to the question is Fender, uh, Costco is not an authorized Fender dealer. Um, and if there was a problem with the guitar, you'd probably have to take it to a Fender ser service center. Although, as we all know, Costco is a exchange it no problems kind of company because uh, that's what you pay for the service. So that's the answer to that question. It's just an interesting question. I thought I would talk about it because, like I said, I, it's just my theory behind it. All right. We have some super chats, but before we get to that one, I have one from Matthew Hansen. He was one of the first ones to ask a question today. He said, if you had a special edition Fender Strat, or he said Strat, so not Fender, 100% stock and a Line 6 Spider 330, uh, and that's all you had. So I just have those two guitars. This is one of those scenarios. And you had about $700 to $1,000 at your discretion. How would you allocate the funds? Well, based on your question, I'm going to say I have 1000 because you said 700 to 1000 And... Uh, uh, I, the spider's fine. I know some people don't like it. I, I, it's not my cup of tea. So let me start with, if I like the strat, then I would take the money and allocate it to the amp. That's what I would go for, uh, is how I would do it. Um, if I liked, uh, the, the, the amp, well, then I would focus on the guitar. But that being said, I'm going to assume that you're not in love with the guitar or the amp either. And I'm also going to assume that you can't sell them or you've already sold them and they're allocated in this funds. So again, the question really bears down to what would I buy if I only had a thousand bucks? If I only had a thousand dollars right now and I had to buy a guitar and an amp, I would probably buy myself a Mexican Strat with a humbucker single single. And just find a used one, get a good deal. Uh, and then I would hunt for a good used amp and I'd probably get something like, uh, you know, either a PV classic cause I could get a really good deal on them used or a Fender hot rod deluxe, anything that I could score an amp. Uh, cause I figure the Mexican threats going to cost me about 350 used. I want the amp to cost me about 350 to 400 used. That puts me in the, you know, seven to 750 range. And then I need a hundred bucks for a good pedal. And then I need some cables and that's how I would do it. That'd be my rig of choice. It's probably not very exciting, right? It's probably the most unexciting thing there ever was. Um, but that's probably what I would do just because I know I could be happy with that. I've had that rig before and I was really happy with it. I never complained when I had that, like, oh, I got to get something better. Um, so let me hit some super chats. Um, this is, I'm going to say Litve. Sure. Upgraded the Tele bridge on my Nitro Finish Ash body guitar. Needed a new bridge, holes three versus four. Should I fill the holes? Uh, and keep, it says keeper, fill the holes and won't convert back. So I'm thinking the question is, it has three holes. No, I think your question is, this is really confusing me. You have a telly bridge with a nitro finish. I got that on an ash body. It needed new bridge holes. So in other words, you said you had to make, it had three and you need four. Should you fill the holes? This is where I'm confused. You understand where I'm confused your question. You're saying you need holes, but you want to fill the holes. I'm sorry. It's not enough information. I know that's a horrible answer. I just don't know what you're asking me. If you're asking me, should you fill the holes before you, before you put new screws in them? You know what I mean? To get better bite. Um, that would depend on what was in there before. I do. I usually dowel anything I can if if I'm putting a bridge to it because I'm gonna. I want it to be permanent. Now I say that. That's what I do for a customer. Sometimes when I'm doing my own stuff, I kind of just get a, not, you know. But they say mechanics are their own worst. 
right? Sometimes when I do my own guitar repairs, they're not the best stuff. It's more faster than what I would do if I was doing somebody else's stuff. So Neil says, hey, Phil, my custom 36 coupe has suddenly gone staticky. I think that's what it says. Staticky, no matter where the volume is, was going to replace the tubes with uh, Mullards. Uh, are these a good choice? Uh, and should I fix the problem? Cheers. Um, yeah, Mullards are good. I'm a JJ fan. There, there, there's, there's tube guys out there. That's one thing, thing I, I tell people all the time. I am not a self-proclaimed tube fan. In other words, I generally put JJs in everything because they're cheap and I like the, uh, the way they, they work. Some people, of course, are tube fans, connoisseurs of tubes. They've experimented with tubes. I tried experimenting with tubes and I never feel like a huge difference in sound to, to, to the, to the, the cost. Like I, I pay 150 bucks and I don't think it sounds that much better. So I kind of go with something I like and I've, I've had really great experience with JJ's. So that's what I generally use. Um, but if it's going staticky, no matter where the volume is, it could be a bad tube. That's for sure. But it also could be, uh, dirty components. That's really common just because the coupe 36s are old. They're older amps They're They probably, the amps got to be at least 10 years old. It's a 10 year old amp. It could be dirty. Don't forget that right components get scratchy but you're on you're on the great way with the idea of being tubes but i would also if you're going to retube it i would definitely go through and clean everything too and uh, or have it cleaned again because it can be dangerous if you're reaching there and touching those capacitors uh brad Hewitt, i'm gonna do this one then i'm gonna hop over to non super chats brad Hewitt says i just bought the boss eq 200 stereo for my stereo web board i just saw the advertisement of the thing uh i mean it was like weird uncanning that it, that it i just saw it uh, have you checked it out? No, I just saw the thing. Uh, there were uh, reviews everywhere. It's better than a review. Uh, wait, it's better than any review has uh, demo best EQ ever. I can tell you this, uh, Brad, I got some good news. Last week I mentioned that I don't have, you know, I didn't do any uh, boss gear this year. And um, that was because I, you know, Boston, re Boston reach out and everything I bought this year from boss was used. And uh, somebody at boss reached out to me and said, please stop by the NAM and we'll talk. Uh, so maybe that's a good sign. That's a really good sign for me because uh, I'm a big, huge boss fan. I would love to be able to, to review a ton of boss stuff because uh, I mean, it's, it's just, there's just nowhere for me to check it out and show you guys and talk about it. I would love it to be a, a bigger subject on the channel. Um, I, I really like it when a lot of the stuff I own and use a lot becomes more stuff. I review a lot just because it's uh, it's uh, well, it's better for me and the idea that I enjoy it. <laughs> Sometimes I'm checking out stuff because it's requested by you guys or a company, but it's fun, but it's a lot funner sometimes like I'm a real, I'm a boss fan, you know, that's it. Um, let's see. What else do we got? Uh, let's see. We'll keep going questions until I get to an, uh, another next announcement. By the way, thank you again, Brad, for the, uh, for the feedback on the new product. That's pretty cool to know that it's good. And it's really nice to hear that it's better. It sounds better than it does in reviews. That's usually not how it works. <laughs> usually you're like, you get it and you go, it doesn't sound as good as when it did in that video. So, all right, what else do we got? There is, what orange wood guitar is that behind me? This is the one I just reviewed. I just reviewed it. I'll put a link in the index. You can see this beautiful sucker right here. Whoops, if I can go in this way. Everything's backwards and it's dark. It's funny how the, how how cameras work. It is. It looks like I'm in the dark, and I I'm not. It's very bright in here. It's just the camera and the lighting because I use a lot of backlighting. It just looks dark. So I'll put a link, and that's the I just did the review on that guitar. Uh, let's see what else do we got. Question. Remember, put the question mark first. Uh, okay, Lucas. Lucas said, Hey, Phil, long time viewer. Thank you. I appreciate that. Finally bought a t-shirt a couple weeks ago. My question, what is your recommendation for modern distortion? I thought you're going to be like, how should I wear it? <laughs> should I wear it? <laughs> should I wear it out to dinner? <laughs> wear it <laughs> when hanging out with my friends? Uh, no. Okay. That's uh, that's good. I'm, I'm glad you're not asking me for fashion advice. Um, Says so, so uh, let's see. Uh, my question is, what's your recommendation for a modern distortion high gain pedal? It's the Lawrence Petros 87. I hate saying uh, that, that it's on my board behind me. This is my personal board behind me. That's the board I'm using. Um, the, the, my favorite modern distortion pedals that I currently use and still using on a day to day basis is my Lawrence Petros 87, my BE 100 by Friedman, uh, a lower gain one, which is my Dirty Shirley one, and, um, Oh, and I use my Bogner Burnley pedal a lot. 
those are my higher gain pedals that I use a lot. Um, I try a bunch, you know, for the channel, but those are the ones I continually use. And um, so, and if I was going to pin it, pin it down to my two favorites, it's definitely the LPD A7 and the BEOD, um, which is great. And it's, and that's important. I probably Lucas to know because I see a lot of used BE 100, you know, over our BEOD pedals now. Cause I think uh, they sold a, a crap ton of them. I mean, they sold a lot of them and, uh, and I think a lot of people on impulse bought them. And so a lot of players, you know, there's just not as hip on them as they were, but I can tell you, there's a ton of players like me that just, man, I, it's, it's still a great pedal. I still, everything I've ever said and thought about that pedal. I still do it's still a great pedal. I highly recommend it. Uh, yeah, somebody says, why do, would you say to hate to say it? I don't know. Oh, why would I say I hate to say the 87? It's because he's my friend. So it doesn't come across. It doesn't feel sincere. You know, right? It's like, um, you know what I mean? When somebody asks you to recommend something, and of course, the thing you recommend is something that's a, a friend. Um, that's why I say that. Because I just want to say, that's why I say that. Um Okay, here's a Gabriel wants a question. It says, hey, Phil, is the neck on the Kiesel Vader on the wide or narrow side compared to a modern Ibanez Wizard, for instance? It's not as wide. Uh, this Kiesel, this is the standard neck Kiesel Vader. This is not the thinner profile. I've never even played the thinner profile. Uh, this neck is definitely uh, a very standard neck. When I mean standard, it almost seems like, you know, generic. Um, but it is what, what I'm saying. If you pick up like the average Schecter guitar, the Dane Electro behind me, a normal Fender type guitar, it's got that kind of vibe of a neck. There's nothing, it's not going to feel extra wide. It's not going to feel extra small. It's, it's, it's the most, if you, if I, if you went to a store and you picked up 50 necks, you would notice that out of the 50, you know, maybe half of them feel kind of consistent medium c-shaped that's how that vader seems to me it's very common neck profile there's a great video um that i have what's great is i have all the ton of videos that are all edited and done they just get time released now and uh there's another review of the vader coming on the on the thing comparing against the strandberg yeah that's right strandberg versus uh vader so we talk about we talk about the necks and how they're different uh what else it's a good time to make an announcement i think so 21 minutes in let's make an announcement there is another link down below, something that's happened that's very exciting for me. Uh, I, I hope it's exciting for some of you that watch this. I'm not sure. A company called Reachable reached out to me. It's a company called Reachable reached out. Makes sense. They're reachable. They reach. Uh, what is it? It's an app that you can download, or I think you can use their website, but it's an app, a downloadable app that allows you to text me and you pay for it. But here's the trick. It guarantees you a response in 48 hours. So you pay and you send me a text and you, I respond in 48 hours. I know right now, I hope some of you guys are snickering. <laughs> I hope you are because if I, if I heard this and I was a sane person, I'd be like, what? But I need to tell you why, because it's important. So when they reached out to me, I had, I didn't, I didn't talk, talk to them and I didn't, uh, there was no interaction until something happened. And then this is what I want to talk about this year. Uh, I finished their video and my patrons have already seen it. It's my every year is a, is a, uh, a, a, I don't want to say ceremony tradition tradition. I do the year in review where I review all the gear I reviewed this year. There are a couple things about that video that were really, uh, kind of startling to me. First, uh, I reviewed a lot less things than I did last year. In fact, so you know, looking at the stats, here are the numbers. I made 27 less videos this year than I did last year, but I answered twice as many emails as I did last year. And when we were looking at it, we were really analyzing it and, and we're trying to figure out, me and my wife, we're trying to figure out, you know, like where is the time going? What are we doing? And here's what we figured out. I, I, I still will, nothing's gonna change. Every day I wake up, so my first thing I do is I get myself a cup of coffee and I answer emails for the first hour of the day. I do that every day, seven days a week. I do it on Sundays. I answer emails every day. It's just a habit. First thing I do is kind of answer emails for an hour. That's seven hours a week. That's a, that's a full work day, seven to eight hours, right? Um, Cause it's give or take. So basically what we figured out was this year, I, I, if you figure that's one work day a week, I'm doing answering emails. That's 52 weeks a year. That's 52 days. I'm answering emails a year work days, not total hours. And that actually was a round down because we know I'm answering emails more than that. What I learned from that is, is if you take the amount of emails I took last year, because that what we can see, double them, double the time. And that time was the time I could have took making videos. So I'm making less videos and answering more emails. And 
the emails are already frustrating for me and everybody else because if you've been right now, what I find fu frustrating is when I tell people I've been answering emails. Um, there's a there's there's lots of you right now watching going, I emailed you, you never answered. Yeah, I don't even get to ten percent of the emails. So you know, that, that's an hour a day, and I don't even break ten percent of the emails. Um, I even had help for a while answering the emails, but what ended up happening was as soon as I had help, everybody circumvented the help and just found a new way directly to me. So long story short, um, I'm still going to answer emails. Nothing's changing. I'm going, like I said, I have adapted a bunch of things that are going to help me produce more content and answer emails. But what I did is added this thing. This is essentially super chat for emails. It's a service. You click it down below. You have an option, uh, for a five, 10, $20 thing. You could do it or not. It's up to you. But what I can tell you is, uh, the agreement I signed with reachable is, I have to answer the text, uh, the message within 48 hours. And that's important because I don't answer texts uh, and emails. Uh, like I said, I answer only about 10% of both texts and emails. And um, so it's just a nice service. Uh, put the link down below. I thought I'd tell you about it. I'll probably remind you guys a couple of times as we go on the next couple of weeks. So you guys know. Uh, so if whenever I hear somebody say, hey, I've, I've tried so many times to contact you, just like a super chat now, you can circumvent that and get right to me if that's important enough for you. There you go. I'm just letting you know. Um, and the other thing is the nice thing about the service is even when I'm traveling, I'll be able to answer these uh, uh, text messages stuff, which is cool. So there you go. By the way, that is no means telling you guys I don't enjoy the emails and you have to stop emailing me. Um, I, I enjoy interacting with you guys and I love seeing all the stuff and a lot of stuff you guys send me actually turns into content. So, so that's, what's great. I just kind of, you kind of have a guilt when you look at the incomplete side of your, you know, it's just like anybody at a work day in your work day with more incompleted than completed. It never feels as great as it should. Um, the John wants to know, John says, Hey Phil, what's your favorite baritone electric guitars? I don't have a favorite baritone electric guitar, John. It's ironic that you would ask me that. I, uh, I have a video that I finished on a new guitar that I explained in the video briefly that, uh, I got because I'm not into baritone guitars. Um, the, uh, I just not a baritone guitar guy. I don't know what it is. I've tried them. I've, I've just put, I put it, you know, the PRS one, I've tried the Dan Electro one. They're all great. There's nothing wrong with the quality. Baritone guitars for me are these guitars that just end up in the corner of my, my room. They just, it just sucks. And then I, I, and I've tried them many times, so I just don't do that. Um, I, if I want baritone, what I've learned is I use the, uh, I, cause I'm usually not recording. If I was recording with it, it'd probably be me more authentic. I'd want an authentic baritone, but right now for baritone, if I'm going to do it, I use the, uh, the pedal. Uh, I'm looking at it and I can't remember. It's the TC electronics pedal. It's red. I figure what it's called. It says up on it. Why don't I have it out? Because it's probably on my other pedal board. But that's what I use. It's a polyphonic. Once they came out with uh, pedals that could drop tune polyphonically, in other words, all the, you know, so you can do chords and stuff. That's what I use for a baritone. I'm totally fine. I'm totally happy and fine with that. Um, and I did a cool video, but I, I it's not on my channel, on Marty Schwartz's channel, but he's going to put out when he feels like we did a cool baritone challenge video that I said, let's do, and he was willing to do it. So, uh uh, Wanna Beetle says, have you ever tried the Mesa or Ashdown bass amps before? Uh, what are your, on your opinions on either? Uh, do you think Ray will go, go dark in episode? Oh, this is a Star Wars question. Uh, did I leave the iron on? I don't know what the, did they leave the iron on? But Ray, uh, the Star Wars question, um, I don't know if Ray's going to go dark in episode. Uh, I don't even know what episode we're up to. Is this nine? <laughs> I like Star Wars like an average Star Wars fan. I've seen all the movies. I've seen every movie up to this point. I'm going to go see this one, but I, I couldn't tell you other than main stuff like this is Darth Vader, this is R2-D2. Most of the stuff I know from Star Wars is when I was a kid because then it's when you like memorized it. I uh, Thank you, by the way. Serang said it's the sub and up. Thank you. Uh, I just noticed it's up in big letters on the pedal. Um, but back to the Star Wars thing. Uh, if you... I, I literally, I, I've said this so many times in the show. It just, I know it's like, it just doesn't seem like it's real. And I promise anyone who knows me personally will back me up on this. All I talk about is guitar stuff. It is really a weird. Most people, when they meet me, <laughs> not from YouTube, well, yes, from YouTube, and they think that they're going to geek with me on gear. A lot of them are sorely, 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 uh, not disappointed for sure. Just sorely like sa sad that they did it because my geekness level is, I'm tame. My my videos, me talking about guitars, this is all tame. 
This is not, I will, I, this is me calm talking at a less than what I normally will. I will usually talk a lot more, talk faster even, which is crazy because I talk fast now and more about gear. It's just, it's a, that's it. I wake up every day and it's like gear talk and more guitars, tuning music. I wish I had other hobbies or thoughts. I just, I don't, I try them. It never works. Um, but back to the Mesa and the Ashdown, Ash I've tried both bass amps. I've owned the Mesa. I had the, the Mesa walkabout. I love that amp. Um, I regret getting rid of it. I had the 112 and I used it all the time. And the only reason I got rid of it, which was the dumb reason, is it has one feature in it that I absolutely can't stand, which is like my Mesa Boogie Mark V behind me, the fan. The fan kicks on. Uh, why Mesa Boogie can't make a temperature uh, setting to where the fan kicks on when it gets warm um, is it sucks. It's a great, it would be a great feature. I mean, you make a, a 25 watt Mesa Boogie head, you think, you know, you're going to have bedroom and small recording session people. The fan, this fan and the Mesa Boogie, a lot of people don't understand this. I've had the Mesa Boogie Mark V the longest of uh, that, that and my prints are my two longest uh, amps I've had. And I use them a lot. And they're, it's not, it's not in videos nearly as much as it used to be. And the reason is, is I just used it in the video the other day and it reminded me when I was editing the video, why it was not in videos anymore. The entire time that the, the entire time me and the other person are talking, you can hear the fan in that thing humming. It was picking up in our lapel mics. It's just, so that's my complaint about the Meso uh, walkabout. If you want a, pra a good amp on stage, it's great. There's no complaints. If you uh, want to practice amp at home, which is, it's both. I'm not saying an amp's made for practice at home or art, but both it, that fan thing sucks that so and you can go and disconnect it i just don't think you should there you go on the ashdown i didn't like the tone of the ashdown as much as the mesa but i like the ashdown stuff as well so really cool all right um what else did we got <laughs> we got some super chats um but let me grab a non-super chat and then i'll hit super chats for a, few, a minute or two hold on because i saw a bunch of them uh, back up uh Okay, Sean says, put the fan, we're talking about the Mesa Boogies, on a toggle switch so you can shut it off uh, for recording if you want. That was the first thing I was going to do, was uh, do that. And you know what happened with the Mesa, not the, the bass amp, but with this, I was going to do it. Super easy fix. I understand what you're saying, right? You just pull it out. We're going to clip the two wires, solder them to a, sw a throw switch, and, and, and I can turn the switch on and off in the back. When I was going to do that in the beginning of it, I was afraid to because I wasn't sure if I was going to keep the amp. And I once you do a mod like that, you know, you're going to, anyone you sell it to, you got to disclose that. And then they're not going to really trust what's going on with the amp. They don't know, you know, what you did in there. And so, um, this is the irony of it. I didn't do it because I didn't want to hurt the resale value. Now that I've had the amp for like four years, five years, however long I've had it. And I like it. And I have no intention even now to get rid of it. It makes sense to do it now, but now it's been so long. I just haven't done it. So I might do that. I might throw it, throw it in there to be honest with you as little as I run this thing. Cause I run it when I just record. Uh, and play, you know, when I'm doing videos, it's running for like 30 minutes at a time. It probably, it probably doesn't even need the fan at all. I could just unplug the fan. I just, you know, and it's out of warranty. So if I do it, I do it. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it really what happened was a throw switch would be a good idea, but I really think a thermostat is a better idea. It's just a better idea. That way I don't have to worry about it, right? There's no, nothing in the back of my head. If it ever gets that warm, it'll just kick on. All right, let's hit some quick super chats real quick. And it's a good time to drink coffee. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, hold on. I'm scrolling back. There was actually more super chats than I thought. Wolverine said tip jar, pass it around y'all. Thank you. I appreciate that Wolverine. That was very nice of you. And he's got beer icons, by the way, no drinking for me today. I travel tomorrow. That's right. I'm traveling again. <laughs> uh. That's it, but it's my last travel before Christmas. Uh, chicken guitars, chick and guitars, not chicken like chicken, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, says, Phil, you sent a lot of folks my way last week. Thank you. You're welcome. I saw that you did the shout out. I saw I saw it on Instagram, uh, the shout out you did for me, and I I uh, put the little the happy heart button. Thank you for doing that. The, um, the I guess it's an emoji. Is that what I do? I don't know. So you push the button. Anyways, I saw it and I hope you saw that I saw it and said, thank you. Uh, Andrew Stevens says tip jar, pass it on. Okay. Thank you guys. I appreciate the, the tip jar. Uh, music therapy says, what do you think of the Baza Wad head Waza headphones? Boss. Why do I say Baza? Baza was boss Waza headphones. Um, 
I heard that the first batch sold out and there's not another batch until February. Somebody sent me an email um, and I didn't get a response to that one, but I started reading it. That was actually the one I started reading last night before I had to stop. Uh, <laughs> and um, uh, so I haven't tried them. Don't know anything about them. I like that my coffee cup has a Fender logo on it too. Uh, and uh, and um, I don't know. I don't know anything about them other than, like I said, uh, you know, I, I'm hearing good things. They're 400 bucks, right? It's kind of weird. Um, I'm afraid of headphones. That should probably, this is a good time to talk about that. I'm a, I'm terrified of headphones. So, you know, I, um, I won't wear headphones. <clears throat> so let's be clear. I, I say that the idea of them, like if I was going to review them, I would tell you honestly what I think of the quality of them and how they sound, but would I use them? Absolutely not. I don't wear headphones. Um, without wearing headphones, playing quietly sitting right here i could be sitting right here uh and playing quietly if somebody opens my office door and says something to me i jump out of my skin almost have a heart attack every time so if i had headphones on i would probably literally have a coronary and die on the spot i don't know what it is about my brain a lot of people do this too it's i can tune the world out talk about and i and i'm happy by the way that's a great trait I, I wish I could say I mastered it. I learned it or I worked on it. It just, that's just how my, how I work. If I start playing guitar right now, it's like the whole world stopped. I can't hear anything. The doorbell can ring. I wouldn't know. <laughs> right. But if you, and, and I say sneak up, my family actually takes offense to this, my wife and kids, because I say sneak all the time. You snuck up on me and they're like, I, they will literally knock on the wall down the hallway as they come towards me to let me know it's coming. They say that to me every time when I jump, they go, I told you the whole, I was making noises and I'm like, I, I know, I don't know what it is. So uh, headphones, I will tune everybody out. And if you, so you'll have to touch me to know, to, to get my attention. And if you touch me when I'm that deep into it, I will probably freak out. I'd probably, you know, I just shake and like, what the heck just happened? Um, though, although I will say this, um, as cool as that is that I like that I have that, I will tell you, it was a little more weird when I had, you know, my kids were really young because my wife would really get upset because I could do that when the kids were crying and stuff. I just tuned it all out. She's like, how do you tune that out? I'm like, I don't know. Just doing my thing. Once I'm in deep thought, it's over. Sarang says, hey, Phil, do you have any info on the upcoming Ibanez gym at NAM? I don't, other than I heard the discontinued the white gem, right? The, the, the main Japan one. Steve I has teased in all the interviews since summer and has said that it will be unlike anything else made before. I would imagine, I think it's time, right? Uh, I didn't hear that by the way, what you're saying. So you're the first one telling me that, but I, I'm not shocked to hear that. Um, I have a good friend at Ibanez. He sent me pictures of the boxes. Maybe he's not a good friend. <laughs> he sent me, yeah, he said, I'm not making this up. He sent me pictures of the boxes and he's like, Phil, look what came in. I wish I could share it with you. And I'm like, why would you send me that of all the things? Right. Um, anyways. Uh, so yeah, I hear good things. I will definitely try to check it out first thing, uh, Thursday morning and send a picture out and stuff and, uh, do stuff like that. That's another thing that's cool about the reachable thing, by the way, if you, if I'm at NAM, you guys can send me a text message and it's going to get to me because it priorities those things right to me. I know I'm kind of sound like a selling it right now, but it's just, it's, it's, it goes right to me. And, uh, it's, it's, that's part of the deal with reachable. You know what I mean? I had, I had a range with them is that I have to respond to these things. So I'm willing to give it a try if you guys are. So that stuff, if you have messages for me when you know I'm at stuff like that now, instead of like, unlike before you could send me messages or emails. Now you can do the thing and it's, it prioritizes it right to me. Um, I have a special thing on my phone. I've been experimenting with it. It's really cool. Uh, Andrew said, uh, you did answer my email. Thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I answer a lot of emails. So I, I, I'm, I know I'm saying a lot of people don't get their answer, their message, but I still answer hundreds of emails a week, just hundreds, you know, when you get thousands, you answer hundreds. It doesn't feel like a lot, but it is a lot. I understand. I'm on it. So, and and I, and I also feel good. Uh, and I'm saying that honestly, I'm I feel lucky that you guys message me and talk to me and ask me things or just you know talk and uh, ask me questions. I feel honored that you guys uh, entrust me with that stuff. I do, and I hear from a lot of the channels. They're like, that sounds crazy to me because <laughs> they don't get messages as much as I do like that stuff. And and um. Like I said, I know what it comes from. I, it comes from a trust and I, I, I respect uh, that you guys have that kind of trust in me. I, if, uh, you know what I mean? Plus it's, you know, like I said, it's what I want to do. 
If I didn't have to make content, I'd just sit and answer your emails all day. In fact, I can tell you right now, if I could get paid to answer the emails instead of the content, you guys might be in trouble because I'll probably just do that. Just kidding. I'd do both. But like I said, it's talking gear is the same as whether I'm making a video or talking to you emails. To me, it's just the same. We're talking about a subject I like. So let's do it. Paul Van, is it Tyrant? <laughs> Paul Van Tyrant. Have you seen the new Epiphone Tommy Thayer uh, electric blue Les Paul. No, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. No, but I have, I have one of my, again, when I do the year end summary review, I kind of analyze the year. What I, what I, how, how did I think the year played out? How did it go? And one of the things I really regret this year was the lack of Epiphone, uh, guitars that I reviewed. And, uh, and I'll be very, very clear with it. It's because all the exciting Epiphones that I thought were cool when I would go to the local stores, the places that had them in town, they didn't have them. They had the boring, everybody has that one Epiphones. So that, that was the biggest, the biggest, uh, letdown is that I should have probably just ordered more of those online and did those. Um, and I think I'll focus more on that next year just because I'm really curious about that. Um, and uh, I really, really want an Epiphone hollow body guitar. And I would like to really sit down and try to find a good Epiphone Les Paul because, and I'm not exaggerating, you'll see it one day. It's not a clickbait. I'm going to do a video called why I got rid of a Gibson Les Paul for an Epiphone because I have two Gibson Les Pauls now. And I love one and I don't love the other. And I really don't feel like buying another expensive Les Paul. And I kind of feel like I think I can find an Epiphone a uh, guitar that I love and have one of those and a real Gibson Les Paul, a real one. And, uh, and I also, like I said, it's kind of like the, uh, the Waza, not boss Waza, the, uh, the Katana. Um, I think a lot of times if I plug the Epiphone in and, uh, and when I'm doing the reviews, it's more relatable to a lot of players because they have those guitars. They can get a reference to that. It's hard when I'm plugging in weird stuff. You know what I mean? So again, just trying to, just trying to, you know, improve the content based on feedback. And that's the feedback you guys gave me. Let's do some non-super chats. I don't want to leave you guys all hanging. Uh, remember, always put the question mark first. How are we doing on time? We're doing great on time. And I love it. You guys are talking amongst yourself. Uh, okay. And now I can't find it. Might have to go back to the super chats. I don't see the question. Here's ones. Uh, cyber tiger says, I wish you could sharpen my ax. Okay. I have a 10 year old golden SD 22 that needs some love, new trim, string trees, fret leveling and fret leveling instead. Um, yes, you know, I, I know that comes up a lot, you know, decking out the guitars for sharpen my ax. I just did a sharpen my ax giveaway for the patrons and I picked a winner, uh, and I announced it to him and, oh, you know what? I can tell you guys who the winner was because hold on a second because he responded. Hold on a second, guys. So I can make an announcement right now because I was very excited about that. And that was nothing in particular. I just decided to do it. There it is. It is Jamie. Jamie was the winner. Thank you again, Janie, Jamie, so much. Uh, and uh, I, I, I messaged him yesterday and he's like excited. And um, I decided to do it. Uh, I plan to do a non- Patreon one too. I just thought, you know, the patrons have been supporting the channel all year and let's do something for them. I did some giveaways. I gave some pedals away. I gave some stuff away. And then I thought about it. I go, what can I do for Christmas? That's gonna be cool. So I did a, a Sharp Max giveaway uh, for that. And so, uh, yeah, I'll be try to open up some Sharp Max uh, type videos uh, next year. I say next year, it's two weeks, you know, that's what we'll do. The, the thing that killed it this year, as we know, is the traveling. I did a lot of traveling. And, um, uh, I really have decided to cut back the traveling la uh, next year. And I think I've told you guys that. So, uh, because that's what I noticed, the traveling really cuts into the, the, that stuff. I mean, it's hard to commit myself to a project that takes a week when, you know what I mean? There's traveling involved and stuff. Okay. Let's do switch sides. What do we got here for a question? We have, we have, as I say that twice, like that's going to change it. We have grumpy Mike says tip jar. Hey, Phil, what's your favorite strat trim replacement right now my favorite strat trim replacement is the vega trim uh i'm in love with that thing i put that in that tajima for marty schwartz and that was what i would call a slow pack guitar what i mean by that is that guitar went in that box to ship out real slow 
and then the tape went over the box real slow because I was like, ah, I hate shipping this guitar to him. I love that uh, guitar trim. So, so much so that I decided to put that Vega trim on my, my own personal Fender Strat. So, and I'll do a video on that as well. Um, I filmed me installing it because it takes minutes. It's a great tremolo system. And um, I mean, I highly recommend it. It's cool. It's different. It's like I said, it's everything I like about tremolos. It's cool. So Vega trim for sure. Um, I like the Godo trims that I have in like the Ibanez and stuff like that. I've said that before too. And, but Vega trims, just a cool, I love the way it feels. I like the quality of it. It feels, you know what it is? It's like, it feels like when you install on your guitar, it feels like I put real, I upgraded the overall quality of that guitar. That's how it feels. When, no matter what the guitar is. So obviously when I stuck that in a $200 Tajima, did the Tajima feel a lot better? Yeah. But when you stick it in your like $2,000 custom shop, it feels like that guitar got better. So that's an, that's a very impressive thing to say about a company. Uh, and they make them in Italy. Very cool stuff. Uh, Reggie Wooten says, happy holidays, coffee money. Thank you. I got coffee and now I got money for coffee. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going to need coffee because tomorrow, like I said, I'm traveling and it's going to take me, I think I'm traveling for 17 hours. Ooh. <laughs> and, and for a, a come go and come right back. So it's like 17 hours to get somewhere, be somewhere for like 24 and then 17 hours back. You too could be a YouTuber and fly as cheap as you can for as far as you can to do something real quick and come back. <laughs> it's not the glamorous life, but it's a cool, it's a cool gig, but no glamour. All right. Uh, Joseph Wozniak uh, just did a super chat for no reason. I appreciate that. Good old UD. Good old dude. I'm going to say it's good old dude, but it looks like good old dud. Good old dude says, hey, Phil, I've been looking at a use Ibanez guitars and wondering which models to hit the K uh, KYG sweet spot. I've been looking at RG 300s, RG 400s, around $400 and less. Are there any to avoid? Um, and then you put RG 420 EXM FM. <laughs> um, I can tell you this. If you're going to look at RGs right now, my favorite two RGs are probably the RG 350, uh, right? And the RG 421, which is the hardtail. I like those a lot. Those are cool guitars. The one I did the sharp on my ax on, which is a weird, again, you know, it's too hard to remember all these names. I, nobody can remember all these Ibanez names. Um, the one I did for the, the, the sharp on my ax where we gave it to way to raise money for an animal shelter with uh, Tom Quayle, that guitar still impresses the crap out of me. I mean, it's a great guitar. Go for that. Uh, I'm not, I don't know. That was a great guitar. Uh, but anything that, so and the only thing with Ibanez, I will tell you like that, that all those inexpensive Ibanez when I say, I know $400 isn't inexpensive, but you understand, you know what I mean? They're not in the premium line of the Ibanez stuff. Um, it is hit or miss, man. So you just want to, you know, uh, if you buy it used, make sure that you ask questions like how are the frets? How does it play? Is there any dead spots? Just ask some quick qual qual uh, qualifying questions. Um, if you buy new, you want to put your hands on it or deal with a, a reputable uh, seller that you can deal with that issue. The, the thing is the Ibanez is are great, but a lot of those guitars for some reason, man, they're hit or miss. It's just every once in a while there's this turd with horrible frets. It's just, it's weird. And, and it's depressing too. Cause I always say this Ibanez used to be in, in the nineties was, you know, it's like, they just made great stuff. I mean, you know, they made cheap stuff too, but I mean, it, they were known for having great fret work and now it's hit or miss sometimes with a lot of the Ibanez stuff, unless you get in the premium lines, the premium stuff. And I don't mean premium, like the line, the pre the, the most expensive lines. Okay. Brian Boda just did a super chat again. Thanks, Brian. I think you're going crazy with the super chats, but I appreciate it, man. <laughs> so, uh, Brent Horrocks says, Hey, Phil, I'm interested in building my own tweed style amp. Hey, I did one of those two of them. Actually, I've done two now. Um, uh, uh, how did the Stu Mac and the Mojo Tone versions compare? Which would you suggest for a newbie? So I did the the two two builds. Now I just haven't filmed the comparison of the two, and um, this is where it gets a little tricky. Let's let's talk about this. So uh, there was an email question I received, and this is a good time to talk about that. Was hey, you've now done the Stu Mac one, and you've done the Mojo Tone. What did you notice was different about each one? Well, they were almost and they were almost identical in the way that they they work. The the uh, plans, the blueprints, so to speak, the instructions are slightly different. The Stu Mac one is good in some ways. I think I prefer the Mojo Tone instructions. It's just how I feel. I, I like them better. However, what I will tell you is the, the amps are essentially identical because from my understanding, and this is just my understanding on the internet talking, and it seems to line up with everything I've heard 
sub subsequently subsequently i don't know what i'm saying that uh the, the stew mac and the mojo tone are the same kits they're sourcing them the same in other words i think mojo tone makes kits for other companies so i think stew mac but see here's what i mean by this so the stew mac kit from my knowledge is a mojo tone kit but specked out to stew max preferences so and that building the kits is what i noticed in other words it's the same kit but there's some co component changes and one of the things i noticed was like i they both came with a jensen speaker but the stew mac one came with a slightly nicer jensen speaker than the mojo tone came with you know right their jensen speaker and the mojo tone was like a 65 dollar mojo what am i doing the I'm trying to say the Jensen speaker in the Mojo Tone was the $65 Jensen, but the Jensen that came in the Stu Mac was like a $100 Jensen. And there was a couple components that looked a little beefed up in the Stu Mac one. So ironically, I think the Stu Mac one's like $100 more than Mojo Tone. I'm pretty sure they're both the same kit made and by mojo tone i just think mojo tone because like we talked about when i did my custom cabinet mojo tone makes stuff for companies they make amps for companies they make uh they make cabinets for companies they make pickups they make pickup parts they sell components so i think mojo tone i think stumac said this is what we want in the kit and then mojo tone put the kit together and send it to Stu Mac. so the reason i say it that way is i can honestly say in my opinion they're the same kit everything i read seems to to qualify that as being accurate, but Stu Mac does spec the kit out a little bit nicer, and that explains a hundred dollar bump. Putting them both together, that's why the 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 video is having problems because I'm afraid that if I do the video and tell you guys what I'm telling you guys, you're gonna want me to swap the two speakers and compare the two amps because when I compare the two amps, one sounds different, but they have different versions of the Jensen, and I just haven't had the time to pull them out, swap the speakers, so I can show you guys what of the difference is the speaker. But, uh, but that being said, I will tell you the heart of the, of, of what I got from the two. They're the same. They are the same. I couldn't tell you anything was different T to, to anything that noticed or mattered to me. Nothing that mattered to me was the same. Both were quality kits and they were great. And I learned a lot and I learned a lot doing two of them for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, Tuko, Tokoyo Lover 89 says, Hey, Phil, do you have a Chinese Rickenbacker clone? I don't. Uh, I think uh, Holly Bent makes a, a clone. Uh, but yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't tried it. Okay, what else do we got? <laughs> I feel like. Oh, this is a weird question. Jose Benito Martinez Jr. Thank you again, by the way. Uh, he's a supporter of the of the show on Patreon. Uh, he says, which Marshall 100 head was your favorite? Um, 900, JCM 2000, DSL. Oh, it's the JCM 100 two, DSL or the JAVM 410. Um, now, I so just to clarify on the record, my favorite Marshall heads are the 50 watt heads. I like the 50 watt heads more. Um I don't know what it is to me, the JCM 900. And so, you know, the way that they made them and I read the father of loud, which is a book and it kind of confirms what I thought, which is uh, there's some bleed through on the amps. In other words, certain series of the amps, even though they're, they're like the 900 and the 800 are named differently and the 2000 and 900 named differently. At some points, the latest edition of 900 is really close to the specs on the early edition of the 2000 stuff like that. Um, I think the 2000 is my favorite. I know it's a weird thing because I really like the 900 but I think the 2000 is my favorite and I really like the JVM. But for some reason, when I play the 2000, it's not about how it sounds. It's not that it sounds better than those two amps. It's that when I hear that, when I play the 2000, I hear the guitar players that I like, like Nuno Bittencourt and Jeff Beck and Joe Bonamassa. I hear people who use those amps. I hear it. And I go, wow, this is that familiar sound I like. So um, I sold my JCM 2000 50 watt head and it was the worst stupidest idea i ever did i i should have kept it i don't know what was wrong with me and i've i've tried to buy another one since then but it's it's when i bought them i when i bought it i bought it in perfect condition for like 350 bucks and then i sold it for five and now you can't buy one for five they're about six to eight now uh depending on the you know condition in the market and so yeah that's that, but I like all three of those amps, but I would pick the 2000 cause I missed my 2000 and it's different than what I have now. The JVM is a great amp, but it's so close to me to the Archon and the Mesa boogie and all the other high gain amps that do that stuff. The, the, the JCM 2000 has its own kind of thing going on 
for, for what my amps do. Um, to me, the 800s and the 900s, they, again, they kind of, I have amps like in the Friedman styles that sounds like that. But, um, and then again, I don't want to give away too much because my year in review is coming and it will talk about my JCM 100 and uh, studio and, and how I feel about that stuff. Oh, Michael Nelson's here. Hey man. And Michael Nelson, if you, is it, am I saying Nielsen or Nielsen? I don't know how I'm saying it, but, uh, check out big Harry guitars. He just did the Nuno video a couple weeks ago. I watched his, uh, the one I think he just did was the pedal of the year. I watch your stuff, Michael, you, as you know, you're one of my favorite channels. Um, always check out his channel guys. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, he is legit. He's a studio, uh, professional studio, uh, musician and engineer and amazing player. And he did the, uh, the Zach wild, how to get the Zach wild or Zach wild. No, no beard tone. I'm messing up his titles and jack, but I, I trust me. I love it. And he did the Nuno one. It was great too. It's just great stuff. Great knowledge. It's a, I love channels that just, you know, just tell me something I, I just didn't know. So I can stick that knowledge in my head instead of remembering the stuff that's probably really important for all us to know. So yes, check out his channel. I'll put a link down below. So, all right, before I go, is there any other, any other super chats I have to clear out real quick? And I have a quick one I'm going to need to do. It's uh max shade says, Hey, Phil, what's the best way to naturally dry out acoustic guitar without the guitar cracking? That's a tough question uh, because it's variable by where you live, whether or not the guitar is humidified in the first place. So, for instance, if you bought it from a store that was keeping it in a in a acoustic room with humidifiers, obviously it's going to dry out very quickly because it's been being it's being humidified. Please understand what I'm saying. If you're adding humidity to a guitar and you stop, you're going to dehumidify that guitar very quickly, and so that's the that's the problem. So, the best way to naturally dry out the acoustic guitar. That's a tough, tough thing. Um, you could put it in a case and then literally use humidifiers and then slowly, you know, remove the humidity over time. Um, my my thing is I wouldn't worry about it too much. Just don't go from extreme. So if it was an extreme humid climate, don't put it in an extreme dry climate. That has been my my go to for acoustics. I play a lot of Taylors. Even Taylors very strict about humidity and stuff, but I don't I don't humidify my Taylors. I I, when I buy an ac acoustic guitar, I spend some time looking at it, checking it out, feeling it, getting a sense of it. Um, but in your case, what I would do is just make sure that if you're trying to not, you know, cause I don't use humidifiers and I live in the desert. Um, some acoustic guys go nuts. Now keep in mind, if I had 20 acoustics in a room and they were all expensive, I'd humidify the room. Don't get me wrong. Um, but for the two or three acoustics I have, uh, that are solid, you know what I mean? Um, I can get enough humidity, uh, just by making sure my house isn't too dry. So uh, that's what I would do. And, and sometimes it's a good investment to do a room humidifier and just keep it. Just don't over humidify guitars. Cause if you do that, if you jack up the humidity level on a guitar, when it drops, it's going to, it's going to, they don't like change. They don't like going from wet to dry and dry to wet. So just keep the change slow. Uh, Steve Long says, thanks for all you do. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. And Jacob King says a made in Mexico strat bridge screws are pokey. Okay, I assume you mean the saddle screws. And make palm muting difficult. Don't want to sand the screws down. Don't do that. Uh, okay, so alternative tech solution are at an affordable bridge. So, yes, I will put a link in the description. Hold on a second. Please give me a second so I can share with you guys. Because I've tried many things, um, I do take this, the, the screws out and then I cut them down. But um, what I have, hold on a second. Here's, I'm searching, getting the stuff so I can show it to you. Cause that way I can put a link in there as well. Hold on a second. As we wait, as I scroll through all the bridge parts. Okay, hold on a second. All right. Um, the bridge that I would recommend, saddles that I would recommend you to look at are the Highwood Contoured Vintage Saddles for Strat. So uh, it's Highwood, H-I-G-H -I Wood, W-O-O-D. I'll put a link in the description. Um, and I'll more importantly show you a screenshot. Maybe. That's the wrong screenshot. So let's find another one. Okay. 
remove from stream, screen share. Here we go. It takes me a second, guys. I'm sorry. Here we are. This is them. Um, when I did the, I did two videos for Stu Mac this year on their channel. And one of the things that they had me do with these, and I tried them out and I was really impressed with them. It was really cool. So there's, you can see, this is what it does. See how ingenious it is. Uh, if you can see in the picture, I don't know if you can see my mouse. Um, you can't, but you can see that the screw is underneath the saddle. See how they bend it over. And I thought it was an ingenious idea. It was great. And, uh, 50 bucks. So it's about the price of a, um, a cheap bridge. So, I mean, it's not going to be an inexpensive solution, but it's 50 bucks. It's not like the end of the world. If you know, it's whatever your, your, your palm is worth. <laughs> So I would give that a try. Uh, and I, uh, there's probably other solutions out there. And I, and so, you know, it's not a Stu Mac exclusive part, obviously, because I did the video for Stu Mac. I, I'm just going to suggest it through them. I think it makes sense. Uh, uh, but also that's where I know they're at. Uh, Highwood is a brand you could probably find it anywhere else on Amazon or whatever else uh, you can find it, you know, wherever sources you will, if you will. So, um, let's see. All right. Anything else? Yeah, Avalon says you can buy shorter saddle screws uh, for the Mexican uh, Strat at, at Amazon. Exactly, you can do that as well too. I mean, it's it's it's. I usually, like I said, I cut mine because I just uh, pull them out and cut them real quick and put them back, and it takes me a second and that doesn't cost me anything. But um, you can either buy replacements for the 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 screws for the bridge, or you can, like I said, try those high woods. I really like the high woods. I uh, not saying you should pick that over the shorter ones by any means. I'm just letting you know I really enjoyed them when I when I installed them on the guitar. I was really impressed. In fact, um, I can tell you after I installed them, I liked them so much I bought a set as a gift for a friend that had that same problem, and I thought this is cool, so I sent them to him. Um, yeah. Music therapy says for 50 bucks, you can buy a whole glary guitar. This is absolutely true. <laughs> it is crazy. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, anything else before we go? I think we did it, man. We, uh, we had a good show this weekend. Um, and we will have a show next weekend. What is next week? Is it Christmas Eve? Where are we at in time? Ooh, this calendar. Before I say, I'll see you next week, and then I don't. No, next week's the 20th. I will see you next week. So everything will be the same bat time, same bat channel. And let's do one more question, then we'll go. And the question is, uh, it's from Zachariah with, I don't know how he got giant question marks. He says, question, I'd like to replace my bridge pickup from a single coil to a humbucker. Would you recommend I cut out for a full size humbucker and install a hot, or install a hot rail type HB. What's the difference in quality? Um, so obviously you didn't tell me what kind of guitar and I obviously I'm assuming you're not talking about American Strat or something like that because it would be routed for a humbucker in the bridge position. Uh, Zachariah also you're not talking about a Mexican Strat because that should also be routed out for a humbucker in the bridge position. So I'm assuming you're talking about either a non Fender style guitar or a Squire guitar uh, that doesn't have that, or you could be talking about vintage guitar. You might be talking, not vintage, like an old one, but like a, uh, vintage reissue Mexican Strat, American Strat. Those would be single, single, single tight route is what they call tight route when they just have single coils. Um, I prefer the sound of a full size humbucker over a mini humbucker. That's what I prefer. However, I would not route the guitar unless it's a guitar that you don't really care about you're going to kill the value of it. Um, cause if you're, if you want, I mean, you want, if you want the guitar to hold any value, if you start routering on a guitar, you're going to kill it. Cause when you disclose that, Hey, yeah, it's been routered. People are going to be like, ah, I don't want that. So that's, that's a thought. Um, so I would, I would not, I mean, again, it's tough cause I don't know what guitar you have. You know what I mean? But I would say get the mini humbucker, try it, see what happens. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, see, uh, Git, Gitbox says hot rails are great for bridge. Well, because that's the thing. The mini humbuckers, this is, I don't want to make sure I'm clear on this. The mini humbuckers are great. I have mini humbuckers. I have a Strat with a mini humbucker in it. I have mini humbuckers in a couple of my guitars and I love them. I just prefer the full size humbuckers. So like I said, I just wanted to be on the record. So you guys know, I prefer a full size. If you gave me a choice to put a full size in a routered humbucker hole, you know what I mean? A full size or a mini, I wouldn't pick the mini over the full size, but I have no problem on the guitars that I have where the, the humbucker didn't fit and I had to go mini. I put the mini in there and I have no regrets. So, 
All right. On that net. <laughs> oh, then see, Travis is also saying loves the hot rails on the telly. I just want to kind of say that. So it's nice to be reaffirmed that there's a lot of people out there liking those mini humbuckers. Um, Phil Mosley says, I put the hot rails in my bridge on my Strat. It's great now. I actually use the bridge on the guitar sometimes. Yeah, it's great. Well, you know, obviously a good friend of mine, Larry Mitchell, he plays a Nags and his Nags has a mini humbucker in the bridge uh, from DiMaggio. So yeah, I mean, like I said, they're great. I just prefer, still prefer full-size humbucker. But use them as well. Um... Okay. And on that note, I think we're going to call it. We did an hour and 15 minutes and there was uh, 700, almost 800 of us today, which is awesome. And we're going to have a great weekend now. And now it's time to do a shout out for the patrons. So um, real quick. And again, the new screen, I don't have the list. So what I'll do is go to our website because it's going to be there. Although it's going to, I'm going to be missing a couple names, but I'll make sure I'll make it up next week. I just don't want to do it two weeks in a row because two weeks ago I couldn't do it either. Cause the same thing, the new system doesn't give me that screen that you used to do for the live support crew. So I want to say thank you to F crew, James Biles, Lawrence Petros, Rob, Martha, Dave Foy, Blake Bean, Derek Miller, Gene Graham, Michael Mooney, Alasdar McLeod, Bruce Collins, Andy Dennis, Gary Phillips, Sam Oram, Chief Squatch, Muse Guitarist, Bob Crosley, Todd Flowers, Tim Farnsworth, Zesty Basil Pizza, Greg Peterson, Dennis Prescott, Craig Parker, Lonnie Hoke, Joseph McCarthy, Anthony Desposito, Desposito Brian Stewart, Kermit Jackson, Tim Camacho, Paul Ostrike, Michael Lindner, Jonathan Pickering, Bob Pickwode, Louis and Alvaro from Pedal Pal FX. They made an announcement about a new pedal. Check that out. Uh, Chris from the Guitar Pit, check out that channel. Gra Jeff Howes, BV Ninja, Zachary Rowe, Justin Maid, and J Jeff Thompson. And then real quick, because I have the supplemental list right here, which is the new ones. There's two new supporters of, as soon as I find it, I have two new supporters for the live show. And one we talked, we did talk about today. Hold on a second. Maybe I don't. Well, I do, but I, maybe I don't have the list. First, it's so the first one is DBP, D, DPB. That's literally <laughs> DBP. And then the other one, I'm going to do it. You know what? I know you guys are hanging out, but I think you guys won't mind that I find the name real quick because there's another name and I want to make sure I, I do it. These people are really supporting the channel. We should say their names. Okay. Um, hold on. It's one name I'm looking for and it's, and I knew I wasn't going to say it right. If I didn't read it, it's Jose Benito Martinez jr. I knew I was going to, I knew it was Jose. I just didn't know if I was going to, I couldn't remember the Benito Martinez. So Jose Bar Benito Martinez jr. He, and those are my two newest ones. I appreciate you guys so much. I appreciate all you, you guys that hung out for me to read that list. It's important to me to say thank you to them and to you guys. And uh, the rest of you guys, I hope you have, and gals, have a great weekend. I'll see you guys next Friday. And uh, as always, know your gear. <laughs>